What's going on guys? I want to talk about health anxiety and your lymph nodes. This is something that plagued my mind towards the end of my health anxiety and hopefully, you know, my goal is to give you a little bit of peace of mind or, you know, to ease your mind on this, give you a little bit better understanding on what could be going on. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical therapist or a mental health therapist or counselor. I'm just a guy sharing with you my experiences. If you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt, smash that like button. Leave me a comment throughout this video or after if you've dealt with any of these lymph nodes, symptoms, or feelings, or fears. Let me know down below. I'm curious. But we're going to jump right into this. I've always had inner ear issues my whole life. I had toots put in my ear whenever I was a baby. I've had ear infections through childhood, teenagehood, uh, early adulthood. I had two major ear infections in my right ear that put me out of commission hearing wise for about four to six months each time. Um, I've had busted eardrums from swimming. So I've had a lot of issues with my ears. There's a tube that runs from your ears into your throat. Well, both ears, so two tubes, run into your throat for drainage purposes. You also have lymph nodes that are all up under here. Now, first off, your lymphatic system is vast. You have them everywhere. You know, most of us know these because that's what swells up a little bit if we get bad colds or sinus infections. We've got them on the back of our neck. Those have swollen up for me as well. We have them in a growing area. We have them all in our stomach. We have them everywhere. Under our arms, whenever I was younger, these swelled up a few times. I had been swollen a few times from being really, really sick. So we've got them everywhere. Their job is to drain out infection to help fight off uh, whatever issue that you're dealing with. I'm not an expert on them, but I've done my little bit of research basically out of fear whenever I was younger and I was dealing with health anxiety. So I started having some issues with this tube and I know that that's the problem. And eventually me and my ENT got on the same page and uh, she suggested, you know, either I can just let, maybe just let this go on or I could get a tube put in that ear and that's a decision I still have not made. Um, I rarely have issues with this anymore, and I think part of the reason is because I don't think about it as much, so I haven't magnified the symptoms. But what I did was I had some issues. I had some fullness in this ear. I thought they were clogged. Went to the clinic a few times, and it was freaking me out. And I was like, I can't hear that good, and that wasn't the issue. There was an issue with the tube. Of course, they didn't diagnose me with that. I let it go on and on for a while, started feeling sorry for myself, and then the gland started to, I, I was feeling around under here, and I felt something here. And it's right around where my uh, artery is. There's a little ball there and there's a lymph node by it. And I just, for some reason, irrationally, just told myself that this is what, this is abnormal. This is something that shouldn't be this size. I've never felt this before, but I wasn't the guy that was always filling on lymph nodes. You know, early in my health anxiety, it was all about the heart. I was scared of having a heart attack or chest pains. Uh, sometimes I had bad headaches, thought I was having strokes. That was my main worry at the time, the heart and then having a stroke. Never had I really worried about, you know, lymphoma or, or really cancer in general yet. But I felt that and instantly, right up to the top of my mind, I sat there and basically said that I have lymphoma. Oh my God. And the, actually the funny thing that happened, I saw a commercial on TV and they mentioned lymphoma. And I knew I had asked, had some issues with this lymph node, I, me thinking that it was abnormal and swollen. And I was like, oh, that's it. I have lymphoma. And it made me almost have a panic attack. So I kept obsessing every day, feeling around, feeling around, feeling around, trying to feel if it's getting bigger and bigger. I will tell you this, if you mess with your lymph nodes, they will get <laughs> bigger, they will swell. They're easily agitated. Any doctor, sh they should tell you this. Most will tell you this that they can swell very, very easily. They're super sensitive, especially if you're messing around with them. So if you're doing that first off, stop. You're not gonna figure out how big they're getting or what the size is, what the true size is, how soft, how hard they're, just stop. Don't just keep messing with them, all right? That's just gonna make things worse. So with that being said, I was at the doctor and I kept feeling around this area. So I got an appointment with an ENT. And I went to go see her. I was tired of this. I was like, I'm not going to die like this. I need to get help. So I did what I tell many of you guys to do. If you continuously uh, remain worried about that, make an appointment, get your reassurance. So I went up there. I was going to go get my reassurance. She told me uh, that she couldn't feel anything. She did some ear pressure tests. She said there's a little bit more ear pressure in this ear. 
uh, possibly could be that. I even pointed right to where I was feeling and I told her to feel on it. I was like, you don't feel that? You know, you don't feel that? She's like, no, I don't feel anything abnormal. And she, you know, she had a lot of cancer patients and everything. So I should have trusted her. Well, I asked her to give me a CAT scan and she refused. She said, you know, there's nothing I see that, you know, makes me feel like you should have a CAT scan. So I'm not going to give you one because technically that can make your risk for cancer way in the future go up. And she just didn't think it was necessary, especially financially. So I was like, all right. She gave me some allergy nasal spray. She said, maybe this will help. Maybe it won't. But if it's the tube, it could be something else. Um, and it might not help that much. So I went home and I used a spray. And for the next like four to five months, just every single day, fullness in my lower, in my inner ear, um, in this tube area, and in this lymphatic area right here where I have like two or three lymph nodes there. It was just feeling full, scaring me like to, you know, to death every single day. So I made another appointment with the ENT. I went up there and I told him, look, I, there's something going on. I really want a CAT scan. And she said, no, I'm not giving it to you. She said, um, and I, I will say I'm happy that she didn't, you know, I guess, because that would have put me in a bind financially at the time. And it wouldn't be necessarily great for my health to have an unnecessary CAT scan. Obviously, I don't have lymphoma. So, I mean, I'm happy now, but in the moment, it kind of made me mad. I'm not going to lie about that. I felt like, you know, and I think doctors should give you reassurance if you've never had a CAT scan and just, it's, I don't think it's a humongous deal to go ahead and get that because it would have saved me, you know, another six months of worry. Eventually, for whatever reason, the tube kind of cleared out on its own, and then I didn't deal with any of that feeling. Now, I still get that feeling here probably once every, I don't know, like four to five months for about a week or so. So I know for a fact it's not cancer because it doesn't just come and go. Cancer doesn't do that. It's going to get worse on its own. It's going to keep getting worse and worse. Eventually, I had to tell myself at the time, like, look, um, I haven't had lymphoma for two years, not treated, you know, in my lymph in my lymph nodes in my neck, and they haven't gotten any bigger. I don't have cancer, so eventually I had to put two and two together and start trusting myself, and then the trust for the doctor uh, came afterwards. So I never made another appointment with her. Uh, it's still something that I'm thinking about doing in the future, getting a tube put in that ear. Um, I don't know, maybe that'll. Uh, help the every once in a while the dysfunction of that tube be a little bit better but uh, I have to see you know if, if that's worth actually going under the knife for because right now it doesn't bother me too much because I don't worry about it uh, but if you're going through anything that has to do with lymph nodes they can get bigger by you messing with them they can get bigger uh, by any type of sickness or infection I actually have growth inside of my throat that happened at the same time after a bad infection, a lymph node on the inside of my throat that's, well, it swole inward and had some abnormal growth. I had seen uh, many oral doctors over it, uh, the ENT over it, and she said it was flesh covered, colored, there's nothing wrong, and most likely what happened was it got bigger during an infection. This can happen and it can stay big permanently. I've known people that actually work with me that have swollen lymph nodes in their neck that never went back down from an infection. So I want you to know that there are many uh, possible causes of your lymph nodes being swollen or bigger or abnormal. Um, as far as hard lymph nodes, that's what they always say online. Watch out for the hardened lymph nodes. Those are the worst ones. Well, my son, who is eight years old, we just got done going through the crazy back and forth from Children's Hospital over two uh, decent sized calcified lymph nodes and is growing hard as a rock. And he had sonogram, x-ray, and an MRI, and she said they're just benign. They're just there. Most likely something happened. He had a little bit of an infection or something, and they hardened up. So that can be the case. Do not worry about it till you go to the doctor and get your reassurance. If the doctor's concerned about your lymph nodes, they know that that's a serious issue and that they should get you tested for it, whether that be via x-ray, sonogram, MRI, CAT scan, or biopsy. Whatever they're going to do, they got to do. If you don't believe what your doctor said the first time, always go back for a second one. Or if you know, go to a different doctor or a different ENT or uh, whatever area of body that you're dealing with and go get your second uh, bout of reassurance if you have to. But after that, guys, you might want to pump the brakes on it and start realizing that this is probably health anxiety. I'm obsessing over it. I'm worrying about it. And yeah, so that was my ordeal with it. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of peace in mind. Hopefully by me just sharing my story with you, I'm going to try to do more of these type of types of videos where I share with you exactly what I went through and some of my crazy scares. 
If you got any value out of this, guys, please like this video. And again, leave me a comment down below if you've dealt with any of these lymph, uh, lymph node symptoms, you know, swelling, enlarged lymph nodes, hardened lymph nodes. If you've dealt with any of that and your fear over it, or if you just want to say, hey, what's up, that's cool. Subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell next to it so you can get updates whenever I put my videos out. YouTube only sends out 10% of um, my subscribers' notifications that I put out videos. I don't know why they do that, what's the purpose of subscriptions, but if you hit that bell, you'll get it every time. Also, join the Facebook group down below. We just passed 1,000 people a few days ago. A big, huge family that helps each other out. We discuss everything. We discuss uh, symptoms that you might be going through, whether this can be for health anxiety, social anxiety, depression, any type of anxiety disorder. We talk about methods on getting better. I post my videos there. It's just a big family. It's a great place to be. Join my Twitter, my Snapchat, my Instagram. Also, guys, join my Patreon account. Become a patron today for just $1. We're getting a few people trickling in on there, and I'm excited about that. I do anything from behind the scene footage videos, vacation videos, uh, I write personalized thank you notes, you get to be uh, in the polls, decide channel decisions and video decisions, I do Skype sessions for 30 minutes and an hour, many cool things in there, so be sure to check out my Patreon account down below, the link will be there. Also have an anxiety store down there where you can find many products that I recommend on overcoming your health anxiety, your pain disorder. Um, social anxiety, depression, all of that. There's journals, there's workbooks, there's general books. There's also vitamins and stuff down there that I take, like the vitamin C and the one-a-day vitamins that are good for your overall nutrition and health. That's there. Um, aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the topic today, and you have a great one.